You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. The embryo is not perfected, but it is perfect in its stage. The clot is perfect in its stage. The fetus is perfect in its stage, but not yet completed. Man is not completed until he becomes one with God. That's the real pilgrimage. That's the real journey of life itself, to become one with God. All right. Now. Well, brothers and sisters, if you expected to hear hate teaching, you're in the wrong place. If you expected to hear me come and beat up on white people, you're in the wrong place. I mean, they're going to get there. I just want to tell you how we can stop to kill it. And white folks need to get involved in this. They need to get involved in the process. Because the very way that of civilization that they have established, I will talk about that. But I don't want to waste a lot of time because we don't have a lot of time. So let's, let's go to the heart of it. What is life? And what is death? So that we can stay in the process of life and avoid the process of death until it comes. It must come to all things that live, but we must not hasten it by our folly. Are you all right? Okay. What is life? The Bible says life is to know thee and thy son, Jesus Christ. That's a very heavy statement, Christians. How come you got to be asked to stop the killing if you know God? Teach, Minister. Teach. And Jesus. Problem is, we talk the right thing, but we really don't know how to live the right yes, thing. Sir. Yes, sir. You know, the scriptures put there very beautifully, but preachers, we all need a deeper understanding of the word. What is life? To know God. And to know Jesus is life, according to the Bible. The Quran says it differently. We're going to deal out of all the books tonight. Life in the Quran is Islam. What? Wait. That's just an Arabic word. Don't, don't get thrown by it. I'm going to speak in English. <laughs> the Quran says that on that day, no religion will be accepted from you but Islam. Oh, wait a minute, God. I am a Christian. Are you telling me that you're not going to accept me except I change up? Well, if you, if you as a Muslim think that, what about the Christians? Christians say, you will not go to heaven. You will not be saved unless you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. They're not wrong. The Muslim is not wrong. They're just talking over, under, and around each other and fighting each other in a foolish way.
Islam means submission to the will of God. Go ahead. Well, now that sounds pretty good to me. How sound to you? Yield, submit your will to do the will of God. That's Islam. That's an Arabic word, but that's what it translates into. Well, let's leave off Arabic for a minute since we are not Arabic speaking people. No religion will be accepted from you but complete submission and obedience to the will of God. Jesus said not my will be done but whose will? Thy will not be talked about but be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're saying the same thing but you speak in Arabic, somebody speak in English, somebody speak in Greek, somebody speak in Hebrew and everybody fighting each other over God they don't understand. into the world to teach different religions. Allah says in the Bible that he is not the author of confusion but of peace. But look at how confused the religious and political world is. I'm a Muslim. Well, well, well I'm a Christian. Well I'm a Hebrew. Well I'm a Jew. Well, I'm a Rastacrucian. Well, I'm a Rastafarian. <laughs> well, I'm a Baptist. Well, uh, I'm a Methodist. Yeah. I'm an Episcopalian. Well, I'm a Catholic. I'm an AME. Well, I'm a CME. I'm a Church of God in Christ. Well, I'm a Church of God through Christ. <laughs> Look at this confusion. you say <laughs> all praise is due to Allah the Muslims say I'm a Shiite I'm a Sunni I'm a Sufi you got it to teach well what was the prophet the prophet Muhammad never said I'm Sunni I'm Sufi I'm Shia he said I'm a Muslim what was Jesus Jesus never knew anything about the name Christianity he never heard it Jesus was long gone preach, Mr. Preach. before Paul was out preaching and went into Antioch and the Bible says at Antioch they started calling the followers of Jesus Christian well, what are you fighting over a name that Jesus don't know nothing about religion was Moses well Moses was a Jew who says so did Moses tell you my religion that I'm preaching is Judaism Moses didn't know nothing about no ism talk to me if I'm lying then stop me but if I'm telling the truth then listen to me
religions of the so-called revealed religions, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, whatever that means, yeah. yes. revealed and then organized. All of these religions claim Abraham as a father. What was Abraham's religion? You say he was a Jew. That's what they say. Did he say? What did he say his religion was? Go bring the Torah. Bring the Old Testament and show me one prophet that said my religion is Judaism. Show me one prophet that said my religion is Christianity. They all said their religion and their way was peace. They never gave you a name. Never, never, never. After the death of the prophets, they started naming the religions yeah. after the men of God. Go so Confucius came. Yeah. That's right. So now you got something called Confucianism that causes Confucianism. <laughs> he leaves they call his teaching Taoism Go ahead, a man named Shinto comes mm -hmm. and after he dies they call the religion Shintoism Go ahead, and after Buddha comes and Buddha died Buddha don't know nothing about Buddhism so you name your religion after Personalities. Personalities are different, but God is one. God is one. Since these persons appeared in different parts of the world at different times, to perform similar yet different functions to ease contemporary burdens of the society but to bring eternal truths upon which they taught a teaching that was good for that season That's right, Brother Minister. That's right. Peace, Minister. how many of you went to grammar school how many went to grammar school did you go should have. <laughs> they have grades in grammar school. Each grade has a teacher. Now the teacher has a different name, but the school's name is the same. I went to so and so grammar school. Who was your teacher in that school? Well, I was under Miss Reddy. You were under Miss Freddy. You were <laughs> different teachers for different grades. So some of us had primary school, but you didn't stay there. Some of us did. <laughs> And you know something? If we had been taught right, what I'm saying right now is primary. It's nursery school knowledge. It's not graduated science. This is actually primary information. And it's so primary that it's sad that we have been so messed up, mistaught, wrongly educated, wrongly taught religiously, that somebody has to come and give us primary knowledge. And you know what? It's this primary knowledge when it is accepted and internalized that stops the killing. It's beginning. 
Now, when you're in primary school, you have a primary teacher. But at the end of the school year, she says, you either have passed or failed. And no matter how much you love Miss Reddy or Miss Freddie, you have to move on to a new teacher. In the same school, teaching you the same thing under the broad subject called education. You leave primary school, you go to high school, hopefully. You have different professors or teachers for different courses. But you don't call mathematics after your mathematics teacher. I was in Henry Scalini's class, so I was studying Scaliniism. I was in Mary Schwartz's English class and I was studying Schwartzism. How stupid that sounds. Well, that's just how silly you sound when you start glorying in your sex or pot, not S E X, sex, S E C T S, sex or parties within the framework of what you call your religion. That's how silly you sound. Naming the eternal truths after some temporary prophet that came and left and some of them you don't even know who they are, where they came or what they taught. But you're going to name God's eternal system after some that came and left. That's the work of Satan. That's right, that's right. To confuse. That's right, that's right. To create division. To cause people to hate one another because of your different expression. I want to talk to you about stopping the killing. The Muslims pray in a certain way. The Jews pray in another way. The Buddhists pray in another way. The Christians pray in another way. But prayer is germane to every religious teaching on this earth. You must pray. Now, if the Quran does not recognize and respect other people's way of prayer. Listen, listen, listen. Other people's rituals. Come on, minister, come on. The Quran says, uh, Abraham talking, turn to us mercifully yeah, yeah. and show us yes. our way of yes. devotion. Everybody's way of devotion is not the same as yours. God gives you a way of devotion that is peculiar and specific to your needs at that time. But prayer is universal. Charity is universal. The struggle of evil, a good against evil is universal. Belief in God is universal. Belief in his angels and in a time of justice and judgment is universal. You have taken the temporal things and confused them with the eternal things. You have taken your rituals and gloried in your rituals rather than extrapolating and extracting the wisdom that is found in the ritual. Christian people want to be baptized. 
or christened, you're not going to be saved unless you're baptized. So some of you dunk them in the water all the way under and pull them up. Some of you sprinkle a little water on the head and make the sign of the cross. But what about us Muslims? We don't baptize. Not in that way. But a Muslim can't pray till he washes. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. Ablution is the preparation for prayer. Washing is preparation for service to God. You can't come to God dirty. This is a dirty world, an unclean world. Don't tell me you washed up for prayer and won't clean up for service to God. Dope smoking Christians. Pork eating Christians. Fornicating and committing adultery Muslims. Homosexual Buddhists. An unclean generation that washes to make prayer but won't clean the heart or clean the mind. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends are the ways of death. This is a family here. Go ahead, Minister. Hey, but we need somebody to call the family into order yes, sir. and bring about love in the place of hate. That's right. So you can bring about life in the place of death. Okay. Now, dear brothers and sisters, I want to complete that theme because it is germane to the subject stop the killing because I just left Africa I got in to America yesterday and I was in Africa on a peace assignment because brothers are killing each other in the name of religion Muslims and Christians killing each other Muslims and Muslims killing each other and so I was asked to contribute what I could to a process I had to come back and leave the process because of a series of engagements but I saw death everywhere. People dying. Death today is glorified and life means nothing. I wanted to talk to you about stopping the killing, but I wanted to finish that point that I was making so that you will never make the primary mistake again of naming your religion after your prophets who are temporary <clears throat> and all of them brought a temporary solution to contemporary problems but they all brought eternal truth that will forever be with us and what we have done is held on to rituals baptism is a ritual communion is a ritual nothing wrong with the ritual but you gotta understand that it is a ritual prayer is a ritual Hajj, pilgrimage.
pilgrimage to Mecca is a ritual. If you hold on to rituals and don't look into the ritual to extrapolate what God intended by the ritual, then you die in the ritual. Listen to me. You are dead in prayer. Because you're praying and it don't mean anything until you get in trouble. Then and only then do you make your prayer sincere. Get down and pray, boy. Our Father, Mr. Anham, have me that name, that kingdom come, that will be down there. Say your grace. Good meat, good God, let's eat. Teach me, The Muslim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim. Why are you, why are you rushing for? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're not thinking about what you're saying? God says in the Quran, he doesn't want you to pray and not be mindful of what you're saying. This is a ritual, but the only way you can make prayer meaningful is to mean what you say. Assalamu alaikum means peace be unto you. It is a prayer. I'm offering you God's peace, but do I mean it? If the words of my mouth and the actions of my tongue and my hands are detrimental to peace, then why pray at all? I'm charitable. I gave $100 tonight. That's very good. And that is wonderful, and I do thank you. And I thank the brother that didn't have anything to give. Right, right, right. Who wished that he did have something That's that he right. could help thank his brother. Uh -huh. I thank him for the good thought. Yes, we do. But if I gave to be seen of men. Watch out. Go ahead. That's right. You see me? See me? Yeah. If I pray to be seen of men. What good is my prayer? Yes, sir. Oh, some of these brothers can lay a prayer on you. Oh, Heavenly Father. <laughs> oh, Heavenly Father. <laughs> Look down upon us, Heavenly Father. <laughs> Biggest hypocrite in the church sometimes. Yeah. We have people in Islam that have memorized the whole Quran. We call them Hafiz. And as a Muslim, you love to sit, and I do, to listen to the recitation of the Quran. And if you were in the synagogue to hear a cantor recite the Torah with those beautiful melodic tones, it is spellbinding. But what does it mean? You know the book but won't live it? You can recite verse after verse of the Quran or the Torah, but you won't submit your will to do the will of God? What good is all your righteous pronouncement? Each prophet taught a different level of wisdom, bringing us closer and closer to coming face to face with God. You gotta have it. You gotta have it.